If you were old enough to have a cell phone in the late 1990s, chances are you either had or knew someone who had a Nokia. At that time, Nokia was the most popular brand of cell phone in the world, seen by millions, if not billions, as the ultimate device to have. Nokia's success can be attributed to a number of different factors, but one of those factors stands above the rest. A simple little game included with every phone. Snake. Simple, yet incredibly addictive, the game signaled the start of a new era in mobile gaming, to which a $100 billion industry owes its gratitude. Synonymous with Nokia, the game's beginnings go back decades. Let's take a look at the history of Snake and how it became the obsession of an entire generation. Snake's origins go back to the 1970s. The game originated in the 1976 multiplayer arcade game Blockade, which was created by American arcade game manufacturer Gremlin Industries. Described as a money magnet, it guaranteed arcade owners powerful profits for you for years. The game was first demonstrated at the Amusement and Music Operators of America show in 1976, and was quoted by Playmeter magazine as being probably the most played game at the show. They described it as more than good, that in fact, it is great. Gremlin came away from the show with 3,000 orders at $995 each. The game was simple. Players had to press arrow keys to move their character, and in moving, they would leave a solid trail behind them. A player would win by lasting the longest, without hitting anything else. Shortly after its release, several games appeared that copied Blockade, including Surround by Atari in 1978, and the TRS-80 computer game Worm. In 1982, Midway's Tron included a single-player variant of Blockade, based on the light cycle game from the film. As a result of this, Blockade-style games were sometimes called Tron, or Light Cycles. The development of Snake is credited to Tonelli Armanto, a developer working at Finnish telecommunications company Nokia. The company wanted to expand the capabilities of Nokia's mobile phones, and Tonelli was hired to work on some of the phone's features namely its calculator, calendar, and importantly, its games. Tonelli and his team had some limitations. The game had to be something that could be controlled using the phone's keypad, something that wouldn't take up too much memory, and something that could fit on a black and white screen of 48 by 84 pixels. The game was also intended to be a two-player game, as Nokia wanted something to take advantage of the new infrared link that was going to be included in its new product. Several games were considered for development, one of them being a mobile port of the hugely successful game Tetris. Tanelli has even been quoted as saying he implemented and tested the game on the device. However, it was claimed that the Tetris company wanted a share of each device Nokia sold an idea Nokia wasn't keen on, and the idea was scrapped. The team eventually settled on the idea of Snake and went with it. Snake was first released on the Nokia 6110 in 1998. The phone sold well and the game was popular, but in the following year, Nokia would release one of the most successful handheld devices in history, the Nokia 3210. With approximately 160 million units sold, 
it is one of the best-selling phones in history. The phone came preloaded with three games, Snake among them, and it's the addition of these games that encouraged high sales among the youth, which at the time was still a growing sector of the market. The following year, Nokia would release yet another iconic device, the Nokia 3310, selling over 120 million units. Rather than rest on their laurels and include the same version of Snake as in the 3210, Nokia decided to revamp the game and created Snake 2, a mobile game that would go down in history as one of the greatest of all time. In this new updated version, the Snake was no longer just a simple line. The Snake had form, there were bonuses, and no longer would you die upon touching the side of the screen. Instead, you'd come back out the other side. The world was hooked, and it was obvious to anyone at the time that this was a significant turning point in mobile gaming. Since the early 2000s, there have been hundreds of snake-like games introduced to the market. Too many to list here. There was Snake X in 2002, first introduced with the color screen Nokia 9290 communicator. Snakes, a 3D version of the game for the N-Gage in 2005. And Snake 3, which saw the game take on more of a living snake approach. Even now, there are hundreds of snake-like games on the Apple App Store alone, showing that the appetite for this kind of game hasn't gone away, despite how far mobile gaming has come since then. For an entire generation, Snake and Snake 2 represent significant milestones in mobile gaming, as well as popular culture. Along with the iconic devices they were included on, they have left an indelible mark on history and will forever be remembered for generations to come. In November 2012, the Museum of Modern Art in New York City even announced that it wished to add Snake to the museum's collection in the future, forever cementing the game's legacy in history. The game's developer, Tanelli, once said he never imagined Snake would become so popular, adding, sometimes, every now and then, I still play it myself.